welcome Karen R. Bagginmaster. session I think is one of the most important pieces of Toastmasters where you get that honest valuable feedback for giving a presentation and figuring out exactly what you can do differently what you've done very well the evaluation session this time was very interesting for me from an evaluation master perspective I had to come up with five evaluators and of the five evaluators only one of them was actually assigned originally <laughs> So coming up with those volunteers, and I appreciate everyone who volunteered who even responded to my email and said, sorry, I've already got another duty. Our first evaluator today is Tom Zuckel, and Tom will be evaluating with Tim. Tom? Tim, living a life of significance. That was the title of your speech, and I thought it was very appropriate. Yesterday, you were saying that you were still trying to craft your speech, and you even shared that with the audience today that you kind of rewrote it a few times and actually rewrote it again this morning. For a first speech, I thought it was outstanding. You stayed away from the podium or the lectern, which was awesome. You were right in the center of the room. You had notes with you, but I didn't see you look at any of them. I think that that was, I don't even think you had to tell us that you had notes because I know everything came from. Your stories, your history, you share with us uh, about your family, your wife, and what you do for uh, your job. And I think it was very appropriate that you were able to tie it all together, tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do, and what I liked was you tied it all the way back to the title of your speech, which was excellent, I think, for a first-time speaker. Obviously, you're comfortable in front of an audience. You give presentations, I'm sure, not only a, as a one-on-one, -on -one, but you also shared with me yesterday that you give some presentations at work. So I think this was a, a simple task for you to do. The things that I saw and that you wanted me to look for were you wanted me to watch your rhythm and your movements and audience engagement. Your rhythm, as you shared with me, was you wanted to make sure that your pacing was correct. You weren't too fast. You weren't getting ahead of us or anything like that. I think that was very appropriate. I think the stories you shared were, were spot on. Again, you shared with us about your family and what you do for a living. The, the movements and the hand gestures, I think, were, were great. The only thing I saw that was a little bit something you need to watch for is kind of the pacing, the movement back and forth. Some of it's appropriate and some of it's not. It's hard to you know, select how you're going to do that. And that obviously, since you rewrote your speech at 4.30 this morning, it's, it's a little bit more difficult to practice that. But that's the only area, excuse me, the only area that I saw that you need to watch in future speeches is gestures can be good and bad. So just watch that a little bit. Audience engagement. I don't know in recent years anybody giving their first speech that not only engaged the audience, but picked on key individuals by name and share something about each one of them that they could relate. You picked on Maureen talking about Nebraska. You picked on Brian talking about Black and Beach and the job for your daughter. How appropriate is that? I mean, what better way to engage the audience? The only thing you did was go over time. That's not so bad. It's your first speech. You'll get you'll work your way into that. I thought it was very good all the way around. I think you uh, shared shared some stories with us, and like I said, the fact that you were able to look at a book this morning that inspired you to give your first speech, I think was outstanding. Great job. Thank you. Our next speaker was Jeff Kineski, and evaluating Jeff today was Leslie Freeman. Leslie? I wanted to 
say that one of the things I was amazed by is this is a really big topic, and I thought that you did a really great job of condensing it and making into the steps that we all know in a very intimate way. Um, what I would say is that you opened your speech with this statement uh, about home improvement, and it, it's true, but it, I really loved that you went into the story about going into the Home Depot because everybody has gone into a store, whether it's Home Depot or Walmart or whatever, and has meant to get one thing <laughs> and is totally distracted by everything else. And so we all know that feeling, and it's such a great story. And I would have liked to have seen you open the speech with that because it gets right into your humor, which is really fantastic. Um, I was so pleasantly surprised by how relatable this was in a funny way. Um, so I wanted to say that you do the same thing with your body language that I do, which is that I dance around a lot. And um, I was thinking about it because when you're telling stories, your body language is perfect. Like you have this exact mimicry of what's going on and everybody can see what you're saying in your language and in your body. And so I'm wondering if maybe when you're practicing, and I don't know because I haven't tried this, maybe if you're when you're practicing, if you think about what exactly is going on in your speech and then create an action for that in your head, if maybe that would help you to have a different kind of interaction with your body and audience. But all over, one of the things I loved about the speech is that your transitions were golden. Like everything was perfect the way it led into each other. And so I would tell you that you use so and you know a lot and I feel like it's because you're not confident in your transitions, but be confident because they're awesome. And I just used that word. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and just trust yourself because you're such a great speaker and it was a great topic and I felt so inspired to go home and do things that I've put off for forever because I've gotten to the, you know, this is taking forever and I don't like it stage. Thank you.
just really nailed this speech. The, the connecting words were minimal, if any at all. I didn't catch them, but very well done. Great speech. Our next speaker was Caroline, our little superstar wanting to get that CC done as soon as possible. Number six, evaluating her with Brandy. to evaluate Caroline, this is my second time, and, and how much I've enjoyed just watching you from the very first time, and we had an extensive conversation um, about what to look for, you know, really what, you know, she wanted me to listen for, and I felt like it was a, I mean, it was probably the most thorough um, conversation I've had in preparation. It was my very first evaluation that I had completed, um, and what I appreciate, and I believe that there's great merit to preparing the evaluator for what you, you know, the speaker is wanting you to look for. What I found this time, because we didn't have a chance to prep for, is really just being open to listening and allowing myself to feel everything that you were doing instead of coming up with a, an instant response. So what I appreciate so much is every time you give a speech, you let us into your world. And I love that because I learned something new every single time. Your speech was marriage negotiation, um, which is very interesting. So I really kind of felt like I was on the edge of my seat. Like, do they really do that? Does that really happen? So I was constantly like asking myself these questions in my head. Um, it, this was also a uh, vocal variety. So um, when you came up at the very beginning and you were singing that song, it was. Very, I mean, I was. I was like, that's. Great. I, I mean, you like had this movement and this beat, and I was like getting into it. I didn't know what it meant, but I was I was going with you. I was moving along, and so I was like, "This is awesome. We're starting off this really good." Um, and so I really enjoyed your intro. Just kind of, get, I think you really captivated the audience because we were all like engrossed, like what's coming next. Um, one area that um, I too was really looking for and, and listening to this is, I believe as a speaker, and I think some of us were challenged with this as well, is time. And when you have so much information to deliver um, and you are trying to work on the tone and your pitch um, and really kind of emphasize key points is making sure you just pause and breathe and let it soak in. Because there were times that I was like, oh, wow. And I was like, and then we were on to moving something and I was like, I didn't know if I would fully retain it. So I'd be the one area because myself, I talk very fast, clearly. Um, and I want to get it all out there as fast as I can. Um, but the information that you had was very, very good. It was very informative. Um, and I appreciate, again, that you have the ability to come up here each and every time and just share about yourself. And you're very comfortable with that. And I love learning about you. So thank you. Our final speaker was our very own John Rock, giving a very interesting speech for his practice speech for next Saturday. Evaluating John was Karen Riley. Karen? Well, I was puzzled about my own history to practicing for um, the speech that you'll give at your daughter's wedding. But for us,
cards. Yes, um, everyone was in, in time but Karen. So Tom, Leslie, Kim, and Brandy were all in time. Thank you. Karen was exactly right. There was a slim 